Welcome to part one of Enshrouded, the full game, a huge new open world co-op survival RPG that you can play solo or with up to 16 friends. This guide's going to introduce you to the game and show you how to unlock the best weapons and armor early. Now Enshrouded is very similar to Valheim. It has huge boss fights, but it's actually different in many ways. For example, there's an entire skill tree where you can level up your character and become a ranger, wizard, healer, tank, warrior, barbarian, beastmaster, survivor, trickster, assassin, battle mage, or you can grab different perks within the skill tree. Now the world itself is procedurally generated, but with handcrafted locations and interactions within it. It has lots of different biomes to explore, scattered with cave systems, which can be terraformed and mined. There's also a lost kingdom that has been overtaken by the Shroud, a plague that mutates creatures, but can be fought back by defeating the various bosses the game throws at. You. And of course, you can build the ultimate base. Now, I'm about to start a new game with you guys, but from what I've played so far, it has been absolutely incredible. But if you guys like what you see and you really want to see this game take off from early access, make sure you press that like button for the YouTube algorithm. That's going to push this video out to new players and really help support the developers. For now, let's begin. So starting out in character creation, we have a few different presets here that you can choose from. Guy looks like Gandalf after the Mines of Moria. And there's Legolas with Lincoln's sideburns. Now with these different presets, you're choosing your character's face and your body. And I'm going to go with this grizzled Gandalf looking veteran because he looks pretty wise. And then we get to choose our hair type. Oh, you actually have Gandalf's hair too. Pretty awesome. And there's several different hairs we can have here. Ponytails, all the female hairs and male hairs are just thrown into one, depending what you're looking for. But every standard hairstyle is here, even the crazy looking war braids. And then we have the hair color, ginger, brown, black hair, and there's even gray and obviously white hair. I think we're going to go with a dark gray. And then we have beard option from I don't have a razor to a, a really nice little mustache and other things that you might want here. We're going with a full-on beard because that's the best choice. And then we have our voices. You can have a female voice. Or a male voice. That guy sounds monstrous. Let's go with him. And now we get a choice of if we want to host our own world, join someone else's, or play on a private server. I'm going to host. Let me know if you guys want to play with me in the comments. But just so you know, if you do make a private server, you can make it public later. Let's begin. Long ago, a wanderer brought an enthralling gift to the people of Embervale. The elixir. It was a cure. A blessing. A weapon. Once concealed by the ancients. It's might had been set free. With it came power, mistrust, and a longing for more. Humanity dug the elixir wells, ripping apart the land and each other to quench their thirst. Elixir and blood, a drop for a drop. But from the depths of the wells, an unforeseen curse crept into Ember Vale. The Shroud, a ruinous fog which sought only to spread and devour. Facing their downfall, ancients and humans united to forge the Flameborn. Now, your time has come. Awake. Here we are, inside some kind of coffin looking thing. We've had a long rest. Now, as you play the game and you read the lore books that you'll find throughout the world, you will start to understand why you're in here and what the heck is going on. But this is how we start the game. We've woken up in this ancient mausoleum where other people are clearly stored, but some of these tombs are open. Let's head outside into the cinder vaults and speak with the cinder flame. You've slumbered for too long, Flameborn. The realm of Embervale has fallen, consumed by the shroud. Now the enduring flame calls for you. 
Find a place in the ruined world and construct a flame altar to create shelter from the dark. We shall do just that. Look at this. It's like escaping the vault in a Bethesda game or looking upon Skyrim for the first time. I mean, this game looks stunning. We can sprint. We can also dodge roll as well. And uh, yeah, we can crouch too. And you can go all the way into the mountains at the back there. A lot of the world is procedurally generated, but the starting world is actually mostly similar. So you guys can follow my video as a tutorial to help you out. Just to our right here, there is a dead man and a book. And here an alchemist called Balthazar talks about how only the flame born, us, can actually understand the flame. And now we need to get off this plateau. You can see on the left there, we've got stamina and stamina regeneration on the bottom. So as you sort of become more tired, you have less and less stamina. And there's actually a chest here, so we should open this up before we go onwards and grab this torch and bandages. Also, items are destructible, but if you look at my torch, if I hit stuff with my torch, it will damage it a lot faster. So it's better to like smash stuff with your fists to get sticks. But we don't need anything yet. Pick up resources, it adds the recipe into your character. So they now know how to craft different things as you pick up items and materials in the game world. It's a pretty nice system, very similar to Valhelm, and uh, I thought it was really good. So we got to go down here, as you can see, being the flameborn. We are lighting the way ahead. There's actually a little secret down here, which you can easily miss. So loot these um, explosive power balls, and then we can throw them at the wall. And this game actually has terraforming. But as I throw these explosives at the wall in front of us, it will clear a path that we can then get through. And behind, we find a secret silver chest. We'll be getting a lot of these today. But here we can find a hatchet, which actually does 11 damage. It's a pretty good weapon. And there's also another book here with a nice song that I would sing for you. So let's carry onwards. Oh, I missed one of these. Better pick that up. And then we'll head down this ladder. Now we can go down the ladder or we can just drop down. It's not enough to actually harm you. And then we can continue into this cave system. And this is where we see the shroud for the first time, which is this blue misty smoke in front of us that actually damages you if you stand in it for too long. But since our character is born of the flame, we actually have an inherent resistance to it. So we can actually go through it. And as you can see, a timer at the top there will appear and start to count down. And if we sit here too long, we'll actually die. Now, the game also has a lock-on feature, so if we press tab, we can lock onto enemies like this one in the distance. You can also crouch and walk up behind them to sneak attack them. But I don't think we've unlocked that as a skill specifically yet. Oh no, we do do... I think we did a bit more damage there. But you can do like 10 times damage if you have sneak attacks. So let's go and kill this guy in the distance before he gets up. We can also obviously dodge roll as well. Um, you can't block, or you can block when you have a shield and you can parry them. So let me try and parry just before he attacks. That's not good. Let's just go ahead and kill him before I die. You can parry in this game. I'll show you an example later. Oh, we actually found a shield. I think that was actually a random drop, but let's go ahead and equip it to our character by right clicking it. And now we've got a shield, which makes it easier to block, and we can block without taking any damage whatsoever. So that's pretty damn good. So now we can head towards the light ahead of us. Beautiful. Back into the open. And this right here, this is actually a checkpoint, a last rest beacon. These exist over the world, and you can also build your own checkpoints, which we're about to build now. But uh, let's follow the path downwards here, and we're actually going to go off to the left. But before we do, you'll see there's a few bushes and some berries. And also a beehive, which you can harvest. There's a random chance for them to actually send bees after you as well, so do be careful. But if we press 8 on the bees on our hotbar there, we'll actually start recovering health by eating that food. Just like Valheim, you also have food that extends your health bar as well and makes you more survivable in combat. But now let's press 5 to equip our axe. There could be some enemies in this camp. So it does look largely abandoned. So we can head onwards into the encampment. And we've leveled up to level 2. Now you can break down some of these items. And when you do, you actually potentially find weapons. Like we just found a wand, which is used by mages who have mana. You see right here, there's like loads of weapon racks. And they have a chance to mostly drop wood. But sometimes they'll drop metal scraps and even weapons. So I do recommend just quickly smashing them up. And here we can find some string, which is very important. I'll show you how to craft it later. 
And there's also a bed we can sleep in, but it's too early for us to need that. And right here, you see that red glow. That's just a law book, which explains that it was this captain's last duty to defend this point. And then we're going to run around here and into what seems to be a village, a ruined, abandoned town. Oh, God, that rat came out of nowhere. Let's go ahead and loot it for its fur, which we can use later. And then we'll go into this building. There's another rat. You see, if I block his attack, it doesn't do any damage. And then you can just kill him in one here. So pretty damn useful indeed. And then inside this building just here is actually a secret wall, which we can open. And there's another secret chest sitting inside. And inside we get a health potion and some wooden arrows. So let's grab that. And then we can go upstairs. There's a little door to open and we can find another law scroll. And this actually adds a location to our map as well. And you can follow along with some of these stories as you play the game. Now we have a look on our map. You can see our objective is currently here. Planes for first base. Just to give you an idea, by the way, that's where we currently are. We've just walked from here to here. And this is how big the map is. I'm still going. Still going. And it's also pretty wide as well. And a lot of this is procedurally generated, but with handcrafted locations within it. And that letter we just read actually showed us another location for us to continue that trail. Marked just here on the map. But anyway, for now, we're going to go to this location where the game wants us to build a base. So let's run over there. We're going to turn right once again out of this area. And we're going to go left. Go down this cliff here. There's actually a dead bunny rabbit we can loot. Has some raw meat. I'll show you how to cook that in a bit. But we want to go to this objective marker and start actually constructing our little home base. Which is going to be our main respawn, respawn point from now on. So this is how we claim a spot for our base. We go click on the flame altar. And as you can see, we need five stone to actually craft it. So to get stone, it's very easy. We're just going to run around the wilderness looking at these rocks. And then you can just press E to literally collect them. Now, later on, we can collect stone even faster when we get a pickaxe. But for now, we're just going to pick up a bunch of stone. So we have some for crafting some weapons as we play the game, like so. And also, make sure you grab these berry bushes because berries are so useful for healing early on. So now we've got all our stone, we can craft a flame altar. So press spacebar to craft it. And it's now appeared in our inventory. If you press Alt, you can see the other tab. And now we can just place it. So I recommend just placing it right in the middle of all the stuff. So you've got a big sort of building area that's flat. So we're going to go ahead and put that down. And then we can commune with the flame. You are not alone. There are other survivors drowsing in nearby ancient vaults. Find them so they may aid your journey. Go gently. One beckons nearby just outside of the Shroud's grass. Very well. So now a new marker has been added to our map. It's just over here to find the sleeping survivor. So let's set that as our waypoint, but we're not going to go there just yet. What we can do first is press V to open the crafting menu, and we actually want to make a workbench, but to do this, we need string. You see these bushes over here in the distance? We just need to go and chop down all these bushes by pressing E on them. And as you can see, we're collecting plant fiber whenever we do that. So destroy a bunch of these bushes. And when you get some plant fiber, you unlock the recipe for crafting string. So now if I press V again, and then I go down to resources on the left here, it says string. So now I need free plant fiber to craft one string. Just keep pressing spacebar and craft as much string as you can, since it is infinitely useful. If you go back to supplies, you can also make bandages, which require torn cloth and string. And that gives you 4% healing per second. It also unlocks the ability for you to make axes, campfires, pickaxes, and torches. So we're going to make an axe with the twig, stone, and string that we just gathered. And with that axe, I can now equip it and just start chopping down trees. And this is how you get logs, so you can actually build yourself a base. As you can see, they start to drop down from the tree. And obviously, once we destroy it, we'll get a bunch of different logs here. So now I'm going to craft that workbench. And I'm also going to craft a construction hammer. And you can use this to actually build yourself a base. So first, we want to place our workbench. I'm just going to place it right at the edge of the construction area over here. And then if I press E to craft, we can now craft building blocks, either out of wood or stone or even a roof. And storage, a glider and a grappling hook. I'm also going to craft some wooden blocks. 
let's go ahead and craft a bunch of these as many as we can we're going to equip the hammer and then we're going to press tab and as you guys can see there are a bunch of different craftable options of what we can craft out of wood or even stone or any other material you want to craft with so i'm going to select a four meter base here and i'm just going to put it down over here so we can start kind of expanding our base i'm going to make some windows i'm also going to make a door over here it's because now it's starting to get dark then we're going to build another floor like so and this system is so easy to build in this game so now our wooden box is complete we need to obviously craft a bed with plant fiber string and torn cloth which you can get from all the cloth baggage around the village you can also make tables fireplaces chairs benches and illumination to increase your comfort which gives your character buffs and of course there's doors and windows as well so let's place our bed just over here and then we can just go ahead and sleep and as you can see, that's going to increase our stamina and regeneration. And now it's sunrise, so we can get up. Next, we want to craft ourselves a club. So let's go ahead and do that. And we also want to craft ourselves a shield. And if you like, you can craft yourself a bird. Or even a wand or a star. Now, in order to craft ourselves ragged shirts, armor, pants, and boots, we will need to go and get some more string and torn cloth. So to do that, we need to head behind us into this abandoned village ruin. And as you can see right here, there's going to be these sort of packages. And these are great sort of areas to get some cloth. So let's go ahead and destroy this with a wooden club that we just crafted. And then we can go ahead and pick up these torn cloth pieces. And now we can make the ragged shirt. Let's go ahead and craft that. And then we need some more materials to make pants and boots. If we go to our backpack, we can right click on the shirt and go to equip. And as you can see, this shirt alone is giving us 17 physical and magical resistance. And now we're actually wearing clothing too. So let's go ahead and smash all this stuff up. We can also get some more water here at the village well. It's an unlimited source of water. And we can drink that for a further buff. And then behind the well, you actually find a smith just over here so if we come here you can see that there's actually some meat that's been left behind and if we read this book it explains that these were intended to be rations and if you actually want to cook them you can come here to the fire press e to cook and your character will sit down they'll actually start to warm up and then if you select the meat in your inventory you can hold it and you'll start to cook it now you actually need to hold it down until it cooks you can burn it so don't hold it there too long and then you can just slowly do this and cook all the meat. And this is going to be how you actually increase your health bar size. So it's pretty important. And now we're going to loop around to the left here. Above the blacksmith. There's actually an interesting area just up here in this ruined village. Where it looks like we can jump over to that balcony in the distance. Let's do that. Like so. And then we can just punch. Oh, I didn't mean to eat meat. But there you go. My health bar has expanded. I'm going to smash down this door. There's actually a secret treasure chest here which we can loot for some wooden arrows. And again, make sure you smash these uh, shields and stuff because it can be a good early source of weaponry. Now we're going to drop down here, but there's probably going to be some enemies around because I can see the shroud area. So we're going to use our club to take out these enemies. Here he is, look. Okay, let me try and parry this attack. There we go. You see he's now stunned and we can just literally wail on him. It's a great ability when, you know, there's more than one enemy or even multiple enemies. Oh, God, there's one guy behind me. Oh, they've got a bit of a delay, like, to their attack. Like, it's a very slow wind-up, and then suddenly they attack, and I'm still kind of not used to it. You wouldn't know what I mean if you played Dark Souls. Like, the enemy animations and wind-ups are very different. Another lore book just here. So now we're going to head, and there's a little secret area going down into the darkness here where we can find another lore book. The Shroud Looms. They all discuss the slow and imminent destruction of the village. I'm going to smash up these uh, barrels here. There's some more water and wooden scraps. And we're going to destroy this. But watch out. It basically reduces your timer there at the top. Now we need a lockpick to open this chest. We will get that later and come back. Oh, we actually found a lockpick in while destroying everything. So there we go. So because we found these metal scraps, we can now craft ourselves a lockpick just here. Let's go ahead and press craft. And now we can actually use this to open this chest. And inside, there's just a couple of bandages. Oh, well, better than nothing. And then we can head out of this shrouded area. And as you can see, that timer at the top there starts to refill. So now if we go down this pathway to the left here, we're going to see a giant broken bridge and unfortunately that is stopping us getting to our objective in the distance there 
So that's kind of our next task, is to figure out how to get across this bridge. And there's a pathway off to the right here that may provide the answer. It's called Braylin Bridge. We can't proceed this way without a grappling hook, so we need to seek another path through this death shroud below us. So let's go back down here and explore these tents quickly. There's some more lore in here as well by the means of a captain's journal. Day six, they are attacked on the bridge by scavengers, also probably looking to survive. So now we can make ourselves some ragged boots. And we can go ahead and equip our boots and also our pants. And now we have 30 physical resistance and magical resistance. So that's going to give us a bit more survivability as we go into the unknown. Now we're going to find the sleeping survivor who is going to be a blacksmith and they're going to unlock kind of like the next progression of craftable things to do that we need to look on our map we need to come over here to find the sleeping survivor and he's across this bridge in that big temple looking structure or at least underneath it so to do that we're going to come down to the right hand side of the bridge here just gonna find actually another little shack which we can take advantage of so let's loot this treasure chest I'm actually going to use the bow a bit now. We're hungry. We had to destroy the bridge and with it our connection to supply. But it worked. We're now separated from the scavenger. But to avoid starvation, we may need to take our chances in the horrible shroud. So let's actually get the bow out. We can aim and shoot. There's a little wind up. And if you don't wait for that wind up, it'll actually mean you do less damage. So make sure you do. We're just going to continue down the path. Stay on the path lest the shroud take him. Salvation lies straight ahead. Okay, you can see there's a bit of an encampment down here where the soldiers were storing some of their supplies. And we can see an enemy. I think he's actually already detected me. But yep, this is basically the archery. You can improve at the archery. You can also crit and headshot enemies. Ooh, Sigil Ring of the Elder, plus eight stamina and health. Like so, it's actually a blue weapon, so I think it's rare. Which we can go ahead and destroy for some additional cloth supply if we want to. Like so. Obviously, we do need to be, be aware of the timing there. But what you'll also find in there is an hourglass. Capsules replenish your remaining time in the shroud. It's consumed upon use and cannot be stashed in the inventory. It's just a good place to harvest. You'll find a lot of loot in here. We don't actually need to use this right now, but just for demonstration purposes, you can see it refills me back to full. It's usually better to, you know, hang on to those. We're just going to follow the path up ahead here. But if you actually leave them until you really need them, just make a mental note of where they are, it's much better to do that because it just allows you to stay in the shroud for longer. But we're going to carry on following this path through these little archways, through this mine here, and then we're going to come out on the other side of the bridge here. And if we climb up the stairs, we can actually get out of the shroud. Oh, hello. That was weird. And you can see my weapon's almost broken. This is why it's usually a good idea before you go on these adventures to actually craft a few of these weapons. You know, otherwise you might be mid-combat and they might get destroyed. So that was from the guy who actually built the bridge. He wrote that. You can sleep on these random beds as you go as well. And, but now we've crossed over this bridge, we're going to go all the way up this path over here towards our objective, which is just ahead through the mountain pass here. And dude, look at the size of that building. It's ginormous. We don't actually need to go in there yet, but right now we need to look at this encampment that's been overtaken by bandits. So there's two enemies at this location. They're pretty well equipped, so I would take care in how you approach it. We are going to try and get up behind this guy. And I've obviously get, got some arrows in case things go south. One thing I could do, actually, is maybe try and shoot that explosive barrel. Okay, we killed him in one. I don't think he noticed. I think he's actually detected by the sound behind him. So maybe I can get a sneak attack in. Oh, backstab damage is what you get. And then we stunned him. Nice. And we stunned him again. Going to finish him off with a two-handed weapon. Which is a nice little combo. I will show you how fearsome these guys can really be. But as you can see, he has a scythe, which is a melee weapon that does 11 damage in case you haven't got anything better yet. It is better that it's as good as the hatchet we found earlier, but it does piercing damage, which is better against armored targets. These guys don't have any armor though, so I think we're going to be fine. And there's another note just down here, which says another failure. The cinder vessel, which is what we woke up from earlier in the game, broke down during testing. The rat I used inside was charred by the coalescent flame. 
A bright flash, then nothing. Thankfully, the side effects of blindness were only temporary. I've acquired a new subject, another rat, Igni. Hopefully our path to salvation. I cannot accept any more setbacks. I will ensure that the cinder vessel holds as if life depends on it. It may well. So he's actually experimenting on all these cinder vessels. We go upstairs here. And find something else interesting. Some more cloth, potentially. And a treasure chest with explosives and another book. By the ancients, I've done it. Equilibrium. The subject sleeps, yet it can be awakened. They are dead yet alive. The subject does not decay. It is untouched by the coarse flow of time, a flame soul in a mortal's body. Igni serves as proof. We can survive. We can endure. The cinder vessels will be our only chance amidst the shroud. We have no other chance. Balthazar, who's the alchemist we read about earlier. And now I'm going to eat some grilled meat so I can gain some more health before we go into this next area where there's like a mini boss. He's not really a mini boss, to be honest. He's pretty easy to take out. I could use my bow, but um, I think we'll go for the axe. Or should we go for the bow? Yes, let's do that. Awaken the survivor, but there is an enemy. Let's see if we can take him down. Oh, he didn't actually hear it. Okay, so we headshot him there. Very effective. Now he's running at us. Oh, right. Let me let me show you how they attack. Oh. Jesus, you see? They just go ham on you. And it does a lot of damage if you let them attack you. So yeah, in combat, they are pretty efficient killers. Range damage is nice when you can use it. Especially on groups of enemies. Because it's pretty easy in this game to kind of like uh, kite the enemy that you're dealing damage to. Another one of Balthazar's notes. Venture forth. It's done. The cinder vessel is a delicate contraption. Still volatile, yet brimming with potential and hope. The first human to enter will be our true prototype, the kindling of a new spark. Thankfully, the blacksmith has volunteered. He must enter the vessel and sleep until roused anew, lest he slip into eternity. May the ashes of one age sustain the seeds of the next. Balthasar. So this was his chemistry lab, and we can now awaken him right here. So we've unlocked the ability to summon the blacksmith. Oh, there's this is a secret area. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, there's another chest in here. Craft a couple. And we can open it. The Executioner's Axe. This actually does 16 damage. As you can see, it's now nighttime, but no matter, we can just fast travel back home. So let's do that. So now we're back at base camp. If we go into crafting, we can make a summoning star, which allows us to summon survivors to our base. And then we can press tab to summon Oswald the Blacksmith. There we Bye. go. Hello there. At long last I return. A humble blacksmith at your service. We can ask him about crafting a proper armor set now. <laughs> Took you long enough to find me. Look at you. Weak and puny. They call you the Flameborn. First thing you need is a weapon. Luckily you woke me up first. Crafting a scrappy sword or spike club will serve as well. So that's like the next tier of weapon. And then we can ask him about the cleansing fire. Ember Veil can be saved. Where there's ash, there's embers, kid. The shroud suffocates the valley. So seek the elixir well with your new gear and raise the root of our misery. Ignite the depths and set the evil ablaze. Go on, I'm counting on you, Flameborn. Wait, is he blind in one eye? <laughs> now the blacksmith can craft us the charcoal kiln and the forge. Next I'll be showing you how to farm metal scrap to forge better weapons and armor. We'll also be making the grappling hook so we can access new areas and defeating the first boss. Check that video out just here and leave a like on this one to help support the developers. I really want to see this game do well.